We're live. Hey, everybody. This is Glenn Vitriello of Choco Tastery. We do a lot of really cool uh, live uh, online and in-person chocolate education and tasting events. And tonight, we come from you uh, from New Jersey and Dallas. And so we have with us a part of our second session, um, Amber Royer. She is an author, and I want to welcome her uh, to our live tasting tonight. Amber, welcome to our tasting. Thank you for having me out. It's going to be a fun one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing all about this chocolate series of books and what it's all about. And yeah, so um, as I'm, I'm just getting everything set up on my end on our page. Um, so everybody who's joining right now, oh, um, just uh, there we go. All right, so everybody who's joining right now, I'd like for you to just you know say hi in the comments and ask any questions for Amber or myself, and we'll shout you out and um, just say where you're coming from, uh, where you're tuning in from, and all that. Um, yeah. So, um, Amber. Yes. How did you start to write about chocolate? What What really uh, inspired you? And uh, like, I, I'm, I'm kind of want to hear about all of it. <laughs> well, there were a number of things that came together kind of all at once. My husband and I were doing some things with the local herb festival, and they wanted us to do a different demo than some of the things we had done in the past. And so we came up on the idea of blending culinary herbs and chocolate. And we did this little pamphlet called There Are Herbs in My Chocolate. And about that time, I started doing some uh, just presentations aboard Royal Caribbean cruise ships. So we did one oh, wow. year four cruises where I got to lecture about gardening and did chocolate tastings and all of that with, um, with some really special chocolate. And one of the people that I met first, whenever I learned about craft chocolate was Art from Amano. And mm -hmm. whenever I was telling him about my idea to do a chocolate tasting aboard a cruise ship, he thought it was really cool. And he actually donated some bars for the first time I did that presentation. And we sailed out to Baltimore and we were going towards Samana, Dominican Republic as one of our stops. So we sailed out of Baltimore. There were a lot of people there who were big fans of commercial chocolate. And it was really interesting doing the chocolate tasting and watching people's reaction. And some of them were like totally sold on craft chocolate. And it's like, no going back, dark chocolate, gonna taste it all, it's gonna be amazing. Mm -hmm. And yet some people were like trying to get into my backup bag of, oops, I ran out of craft chocolate. Here's just some chocolate from the grocery store because they really had a preference for that very neutral flavor. So coming off of doing that presentation, getting to Samana, I got to meet the family that was running the cacao plantation. And we got to see them do a demo where they were like hand grinding cacao. And that was the first wow. time we got to taste the pulp out of a cacao pod. And this all happened a few months before National Novel Writing Month. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I can't say that I have. Okay, so National Novel Writing Month happens every November, and it is where people across the country, and now I think it's around the globe, get together with the idea to write at least 50,000 words, which is their minimum definition of a novel during the month of November. Mm -hmm. So that happened shortly after I had been doing all of these lectures, and we had done our little chocolate cookbook. And I had no idea what I was going to do for my novel for National Novel Writing Month. And then I just got this idea because I had been working on all this stuff with chocolate. It's like, why not do something with chocolate? And I'm a big believer in what I call the kitchen sink novel. And that's, I'm going to put in everything I like, including the kitchen sink. And so um, mm. I love science fiction. So I decided I was going to do it as a space opera. I, I really like cheesy television with that over the top <laughs> element. So you've got a little bit of soap opera thing going on in here. And because um, we're talking chocolate and I wanted to look at if chocolate was the only thing Earth had, where the characters would logically be from, 
Um, mm -hmm. They had to be from in the chocolate belt, at least my protagonist did. And so soap opera tradition also leads you straight to telenovela. So she's a washed up telenovela star who's gone halfway across the galaxy to become a culinary arts student slash linguist. And by the end of the series, she's also become a diplomat. Oh. Starts with free chocolate. This is the first one. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, and so we have four bars today to mm -hmm. to taste along your you know your journey of telling us all about your each of these books and uh, leading up to the one that's coming out next month. But um, but we have a first bar that is made by someone who's near and dear to you in your journey, um, Art Pollard in, from Amano. So we have uh, the Dos Rios bar. Thank you for holding that up. I do have a little like not great light here, um, but we're gonna tag team on um, you know, doing a tasting. Uh, she has much better light than me, but um, so as we get this ready, um, you know, for everybody who may not know, I, um, with Chocolate Tastery, I have my own chocolate tasting guide. And uh, basically, it, there's four simple steps to tasting chocolate that could help you mindfully take, like, take in the experience. And so, obviously, the first step would be to look at the, the colors of the bar compare sometimes it's uh, a little bit darker or lighter brown than like other uh, you know other bars the same percentage uh, you have um, you know the snap that's a sign of how well tempered the bar is um, then you have the aromas and you have the what you actually taste and then some sample you know sample uh, uh, flavors so I have this part of my classes and online resources. And uh, I have a tasting sheet that uh, you can also check out where you could put in each of these attributes and write about you know, what uh, experiences does it evoke for you? Um, you know, how you may be brought back to that moment that inspired you in some way. So it's really cool. And uh, it's a cool, uh, useful tool as well. Um, so what I like about Amano's bar, uh, the wrapper, uh, just zoom in right there, um, it, he writes, it's all about perfection uh, right up there. So that's, uh, that's, really, uh, that's really art, it's really awesome. So uh, art was the first um, craft chocolate maker that I ever really got to talk to. And he is truly passionate about what he does. Mm. I remember uh, meeting Art for the first time back in 2015 at the, the Fine Chocolate Industry Association. And um, as I open this up, um, I'll say, I'll share like how I went up to him and I was like, oh, this, like, I just started learning about, you know, making chocolate. And I took the Echo Chocolate class and I read about you and now you're here and I'm saying hi. And it was the most awkward thing I could have possibly <laughs> done. But, um, but it was cool because I actually put it into the face that I was studying about. Yeah. Um, but that, that, and like, did you have that type of experience where it's just like, a, oh my gosh, like, you're really cool because you do, uh, you mm -hmm. do make chocolate that's really awesome and tastes really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, when I met Art the first time, I didn't really know a whole lot about craft chocolate. We had wandered into the Dallas Chocolate Festival. It must have been their second or third one. I know we weren't there for the very first one, but there were only four chocolate makers who had come out. <laughs> oh, is that the very first one? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's from this past year. So. Okay. Um, but yeah, there were only four chocolate makers who had come out and um, we sat through a demo on how chocolate was made and it was really eye-opening and fascinating. And Art was just really kind that he took the time to talk to us, even though we didn't know a whole lot about craft chocolate at that point. That's really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And bringing up the bar, mm -hmm. if you want to 
share on your end too to to show in the light okay better lighting than mine i kind of broke mine already it's all good okay <laughs> it smells amazing too yeah, i wish they so, could smell it at home <laughs> yeah you guys will just have to go out and get it um so i'm already breaking it up and everything but basically it's a from what i see like if you put it to the spectrum here it's like a lighter brown than a dark dark brown um yeah you can see that oops there you i think i think it would probably qualify as a medium brown cool awesome and then the snap snap is amazing you hear it i'll hear it wherever you are um okay. But yeah, like the, the so uh, let's look at the um, hold it to your nose and smell the aromas. Oh wow! So what do you smell? Happiness. It, it's got kind of a fruity nature to it. I got like a tropical almost. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah, let's do it. Like Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so there's a little bit of that front end acidity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's definitely something citrusy going on here. I think there's a lot, there's like um, coconut ish mm -hmm. yeah so it's like that like you're almost like on a beach <laughs> having a, a mono bar <laughs> basically sitting yeah. like having like a coconut drink or something <laughs> next to you i feel like that's that's where this has taken me so the tasting notes it says bergamot orange and i'm definitely feeling that hint of citrus and it also mm -hmm. mentions lavender and once you read that, I can definitely mm -hmm. taste lavender. Yeah, it's it's um, you do get that floral note mm -hmm. that underlies it. Yeah, it's just a really nice bar, and like you, you do get like see, it also has like you could taste uh, blueberries. Let me just mm -hmm. show that there. Um, so there's it's like a Dominican Republic is a, a Trinitario variety. And so uh, it's really a lot of fruit forward tasting profiles. Yeah. Um, so it's really nice. It's, uh, it's four ingredient chocolate. So they have your cocoa beans, your sugar, cocoa butter, and you add some vanilla in there to round out the flavor profile. But um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very enjoyable bar um, and it's always had an impression on me through my years. And obviously it's had a big impression on you mm -hmm. through your journey as a writer. So, and, um, yeah. And I like that we were able to both get the Dos Rios bar because mm -hmm. with it being from the Dominican Republic, that was obviously not the same farm, but it was the same location as the first plantation I got to visit. And that that's really cool because it's like, close to something near and dear to you and that's really awesome that you could have that have something chocolate take you back to that and Absolutely. like you always have that connection no matter what and that's that's what like tasting chocolate is all about basically like mm -hmm. evoking those memories and i'm so happy that like today we've curated the uh, four bars that are actually near and dear to you and to mm -hmm. like your journey um so i think um you know for tasting at home it's good to um, taste some water between bars and if you have some crackers um, I had a cracker here um, I normally don't follow the rules all the time but um, I do have a little bit of cracker here uh, just water crackers it helps with um, taking away the uh, extra cocoa butter fat mm -hmm. in your mouth so that you're able to you know, taste the next bar um, so um talking about the next bar uh we have uh five mile chocolate is the next one um it's from animali india so we'll do it this way animali india so um 
what connection do you have with Five Mile? So um, Five Mile actually came out to my first book launch party and they did a little demo on how chocolate is made. And um, I guess I was gonna have to tear the paper. I was trying not to. <laughs> no, they, all the wrappers are so pretty. Yeah, and they're serious about keeping it in there too. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jessica from Five Mile is a pretty amazing person. She is kind and very generous with her time. So not only did she come out to do that demo, but later on, um, I actually got to take a chocolate making class with her and a couple of other craft chocolate makers at um, Dallas Chocolate. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I'll never forget, I was able to um, temper chocolate in front of some pros. And I, I was like, wow. you know, when you do it at home in your kitchen, there's not as much pressure on as when you do <laughs> it in front of, you know, Ben from Potomac Chocolate and Jessica from Five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those guys are really awesome at what they do. I'm going to be actually talking with Ben tomorrow uh, evening, um, yeah. doing the same thing we're doing now. We're going to do it with him. But awesome. um, with, with, with Jessica and what they her team does is really fantastic. Their bars, um, there's actually each, each, there's like five different sections and it's one mile each, so it's five miles. Yeah. Um, funny. Um, so I'm gonna just break break it and then um, see if we can compare. It's really tough to compare. I don't know if you wanna compare there with, with you, but this looks like, yeah, this looks like the five mile bar is a little bit darker um than the Armano bar yeah so it has a nice snap, snap to it yeah hear it all the way in Dallas I hear it all the way in New Jersey <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right so uh, let's see what we smell so whereas the first one was very very fruity this one is almost spicy Mm. Yeah. They're saying we should be um, experiencing Serrano. So I, I, I think I almost smell that. Interesting. I think I also have chocolate on my nose too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happens. Chocolate is one of those things that winds up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, what's some, why not have fun with uh, chocolate and stick it up your nose? <laughs> All right, um, so let's try it out. Cheers. Okay, there we go. Mm. So it's taking a little bit longer for the flavor to develop. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, quick tip. Uh, when you're tasting, um, normally just, if you just like, you don't want to chew it, you want to let it like bite it once or twice. And then, uh, you know, somewhat consciously open your mouth a little bit to aerate it, kind of like how we aerate wine a little bit when we pour it or in the glass, we stir it. Um, with chocolate, it's good to have air flow through your mouth while you're, it's melting so that the flavor notes the aromas can go up through to your to your brain, right? All through mm -hmm. the nasal passages in the lab. So that's a really cool tip because um, sometimes like when you do that, you can totally get like, oh wow, that's a, like a tropical fruit or that's like that nutty note or whatever, when you may not have tasted it sooner or other ways, um, just keeping your mouth like shut all the time. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely taste the citrus here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing because you know if anybody's not truly experienced with chocolate, these these are notes in the chocolate itself, not added things. So when the yeah. tasting notes say there there's no added chili in it, it just has a reminiscent feel of it. And then there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to tasting, um, but I do get a lot of acidity with it, um, and this yeah. is what the India um, the India uh, area is uh, known for. It's the acidic note. Um, mm -hmm. But still you have like that, the tropical fruit. Um, 
I don't, like you said, serrano pepper. I'm not sure if I actually get that. I don't know. I get There's just no, like, a spicy element to it. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know if, I don't think serranos are that spicy. Yeah. Um, but I'm definitely getting, what they're saying is um, orange zest and honeydew melon and serrano. So um, for, I, I definitely get the, the citrus is coming through that orange. Sorry, uh, I broke my paper. No, it's so good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that, that's a, a really nice bar. Um, but I think, um, yeah, they, they, so you're always going to get that acidity with that that uh, that area, um, unless you tone it down a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, overall, pretty cool. Um, just a time check. We have about nine minutes left and two bars left to go. So okay. um, as far as the next step in your journey, um, you we also have we have. I don't know how it plays in, so I would like to know. Coco Andre, um, who are them to you? Okay, so Coco Andre is a Latina-owned business. They're a mother-daughter team, and they source all of their um, coffee beans, vanilla, cinnamon, and some of their cacao from Chiapas, Mexico. So my character, right. you can see a little better in the second book cover, um, she is from Mexico because wow. I, I have a lot of friends who are from northern Mexico or have family there, um, also in California and obviously Texas, you know, it's, oh, I should be unwrapping this while I talk, sorry. It's, That's um, fine, I got you. It's a very multicultural area. And so I wanted to honor some of my close friends. In fact, um, one of them, my character's name is um, Bo Benitez. My uh -huh. one of my very best friends, her name is Monica Benitez, and she let me borrow her last name of the book. She's done oh. the voiceovers for the book trailers. She said if there is an audiobook and I wind up doing it myself, that she better be the one to read it. And look <laughs> at the beautiful printing on this bar. Yeah, I, I was holding it up while you were showing the book. Um, yeah. it's really nice. Yeah, so there's so a lot, there's a lot of uh flowers and uh what other yeah i think it's just flowers and some birds yeah but they also do sculptures um they were recently featured in d magazine with this heart-shaped cactus sculpture that cool. was really cool awesome but so they're super um, friendly yeah i mean uh, i never heard of them before and i don't think they were at dallas chocolate festival when i was there or at least i didn't see them but um i'm I excited to taste this they were the official chocolate at the Texas State Fair. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they've been around. Yeah. Um, so let's do this. Um, and I don't even, let's see. Uh, so as nice far snack. as color goes, yeah, there's, uh, it's along the same lines as um, the five mile, I think. Yeah, maybe a little bit different. Stuff to tell, but um, I think it's, it's kind of like between the Amano and the Five Mile, as far as color. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Nice snap. Ooh, there's something interesting there. Yeah, it has almost a savory note. Yeah, like I, I just thought of like potato chips. I don't know if that's a thing. I, but, I usually um, get their chocolate bark, so this will actually be my first time tasting this chocolate without anything in it or on it. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so they don't say they don't have anything, any guidance around. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> no, but it's very, very Ooh. savory and yeah, very spicy. Right. It has a very, very unique feel to it, doesn't it? Yeah, whoa, there's a spiciness to that. It does. Not, but not like a hot spicy. It's just like, like um, an actual, like spice that you would cook with, like a salt or pepper, but not like salt and pepper. This is something else. It's it's really nice. 
It's interesting. <laughs> I have managed to introduce you to something new. <laughs> yeah, you have. Yeah. And then I'm wondering, um, so it's, it's literally just two ingredients. It's just 75% yeah. cacao and uh, the sugar. Yeah, and but you would swear that it had some sort of spice in it if you're tasting it. Unless it's, uh, maybe there is, I'm also getting like a fruity note, like yeah. um, like a, maybe like a brown fruit of some sort. I can I, see that. I, yeah. Like a spiced potato chip with a sweet undertone. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It's kind of like one of those like interesting savory potato chips that yeah. are unique. All right, let's get some water. All right, and so um, as, as you go through the two books, you're now going to be releasing your third book called mm -hmm. Fake Chocolate, um, if you want to hold that up. Um, and so uh, tell me about when it's being released and, um, and how we could actually, um, you know, actually, let's talk about how it relates to French broad chocolate. Okay. So, you know, you have um, that story. Okay, so French broad chocolate, I think, is an example of how when you become part of the chocolate community, people start to embrace you a little bit. And um, I've gotten to know Sander from Dallas Chocolate pretty well. And I told him I was working on another project. And so I'm, I'm actually in the middle of shopping a mystery where my character is a bean to bar chocolate maker who gets to travel the world and solve murders. So that one is not coming out anytime soon, but JL from French Broad took the time to read large sections of the manuscript because she is an amazing person to make sure that I was getting all of that right. And obviously I think when I wrote Free Chocolate, I was just learning about craft chocolate and doing a lot of research on what the, the botany of the plant was and everything. Um, then when I wrote Pure Chocolate, I was, you know, playing a little more with, there's a, an alien who's allergic to theobromine and looking at the chemicals <laughs> and all of that. So by the time you get to fake chocolate, I'm learning more about the botany. And I'm talking to people like JL who, um, sometime get her to tell you the story of how she took a uh, bus that they painted with all kinds of fun things from Minnesota to Costa Rica to start a bakery. And then she wow. wound up falling in love with chocolate and starting a company down, down there that wound up up here. And now she's in um, South Carolina, North, North, North Carolina, uh, I think it is. And it's Ash by the- French Asheville, yep, okay. Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, so they're they're off of the French Broad River, which is where the company gets its name. Um, cool. But I just think this represents the generosity and the education that people have shared. Because by the time I got to book three, um, I introduced a plant disease that was synthetically made to destroy chocolate on Earth. Oh. And um, looking once again at botany and real world things where we, we've started trying to grow cacao trees in my husband's office. and one of the things that you have to, to look for is there are real plant diseases that threaten the chocolate supply. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like because of the generosity of everybody in the chocolate field, I've gotten to know so much more about chocolate than when I wrote the first book. And I think fake chocolate mm -hmm. really reflects that, especially as the ending starts to come full circle with the way that my character manages to save chocolate on earth. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> and I love how you know, knowing Jill, uh, you know, she is just like the biggest heart uh, oh, yeah. in the industry. Um, she's such a sweet person and she's always there grinding at every single show. Um, and so we have the Guatemala bar from the French broad team um, here to taste. Um, and so you can see it's kind of like a Mano's bar where they have um, their logo on every single piece. Um, you also so you got to see the inside of this box chocolate. where she's got yeah, show that. Yeah. a story and am I getting it in the middle? She's got a story and explanation <laughs> of the bar and everything. Yeah. And so um, uh, I guess looking at this bar and some of the other 
bars. And I think um, it's a little bit darker than the Amano bar. Um, okay. And so it's less, I think it's a little less darker than the, um, the five mile bar. Yeah. It is pretty light. I think it's pretty close uh, in color to the um, Coco Andre bar. Do this to pick another piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. All right. So let's break it. I broke it multiple times. Um, <laughs> and uh, just because. Um, it so wasn't let's see. as loud as the others, but it has a still it has a yeah. good solid feel when it snaps. Yeah, I'm getting like a, a multi note. I usually yeah. get a lot, that's all I taste. I all that's, ah. uh, so what I've been smelling like all night is like malted notes. I can see that. But it's like cocoa as well. I think it's more cocoa and it's just coming across as malt. Um, yeah. But it is chocolatey, chocolatey yes. aroma. Very definitely. All right, so let's do it. The melt is like pretty quick too. Mm -hmm. There's definitely an astringent feel to it, but not mm -hmm. an unpleasant amount of astringency. It's very definitely what you would consider chocolatey. Mm -hmm. There is like a like a red fruit note. Mm hmm. Mm. It's so interesting. It's definitely a fruit. Yeah. Right. It's got. Um, hmm. But it's got the fruitiness that that melts out of the acidity. So as the flavor develops, it goes from fairly intense to something that has like a mellower feel to it. Yeah, and I'm getting the astringencies coming through right now at the end where like my mouth's watering right now. That's yeah. that's a sign of astringency. Yep. Yeah. Um and it's a three ingredient chocolate. So it's the cacao, this the cacao, the sugar, and some added cocoa butter. Um yeah. and they don't really share on the label um the the chocolate um the chocolate flavor notes that you oh, there's may... actually a little um, piece of paper in there oh. with notes on taste. <laughs> All right. Well, uh... they're they're saying that you should oh. use Concord grape, fresh baked brownie, and almond. I think that that that's perfect. Note, yeah, it's exactly what it was. That great yeah. note. Yeah, wow. but they they always have a little like extra something with more information. In it's fact, cool. um, there's some information on the farm on the back of it. Cool. I'm sorry. Which, which farm is this? Um, oh, so it's, yeah, this is, oh my gosh. This is literally like grape jelly from like a peanut butter <laughs> and jelly sandwich. When, <laughs> this is like It's amazing once they here. identify the name, you're like, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> because, and, and the, the really cool thing about it is that like you may have to think about it because you never had it in so long. Yeah. That like, like when you, you're like, aha. But like, if you were to like search for it and search for it and like rack your brains out, you know, like, I know what that flavor is. And then like, I, there's a pros and cons of having flavors included in bars on wrappers or anything like that. But when it's like, you may taste something like this, it like opens up the whole experience. Like we just like, yeah. oh my God, it's totally like that jelly. And it's totally yeah. like childhood. Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, so those are the four bars that we tasted. Uh, is there, um, can you share with everybody how they can get a hold of your books? Okay, um, so my books are available Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all of those good sites. Um, you can pre-order fake chocolate now, um, and in the meantime, get free and pure 
to go ahead and read. If you're looking for the first first one, it is this one. I'm sorry, this is backwards to what I'm using. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called Free Chocolate. Um, right now, Angry Robot, who put out the first two books, they are having a half off shelf isolation isolation sale on the ebook versions. So if you're looking okay. for a cheap read while you're stuck at home, that's an option. Um, if you're looking for more information on me or on the books themselves, my website is amberroyer.com. I also have a blog there where I talk about um, writing craft and I've also started interviewing different people that I've met who are really cool in the chocolate industry. Um, I'm a big Instagrammer, so you can find me on there with a lot of book quotes and other information on how the book was done. Um, and I'm also on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. TikTok. Yes. We should have been on TikTok as well tonight. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's on TikTok or Instagram. Yeah. Um, and, you know making the time go quicker but um yeah but yeah i, I want to thank you so much for joining tonight um i definitely got a lot of um the backstory to like your inspiration behind this series and i really hope that a lot of people uh out there do pick up a copy um whether it's like uh, uh the electronic version or the physical version um so that they could support you and you know i just love how uh, you share your passion for chocolate and the, the people who've inspired you along the way. Uh, it's just really, really inspiring. And I'm happy to be supportive of this um, and uh, maybe work on the audio version. So uh, <laughs> the audio book version, because I normally don't really read a lot, but I would yeah. totally listen to this. Um, so that'd be really cool. We can um, talk. <laughs> <laughs> great all right well uh it's a little past nine so um i think that uh we're could pretty much uh you know turn it over to the next session but um but yeah i want to thank you again um and definitely guys go out there go support amber uh if you're in dallas area go hit her up and make sure you grab like a chocolate bar or coffee with her at some point in and talk about chocolate and her books, okay? Uh, there's plenty of local places to do it. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I think that's it. Anything else you wanna share? Uh, thank you guys very much. All right, bye. <laughs>